Slut is a derogatory term used only for women who have casual sexual partners. What a perfect reflection of modern society. Welcome to Generation Slut, the podcast that examines sexuality through the lens of a social media-centered generation. I'm your host, Melrose Michaels, and we're about to get into it. Welcome back to Podcast Generation Slut. I'm here with the infamous Lena the Plug. I finally have the opportunity to meet her. I'm super excited. Um, you don't know this, but seeing you and doing everything you've done on YouTube is actually what inspired me to not be like afraid to own what I'm doing and be bigger on social. So a huge thank you for that because I'm like, okay, she has a YouTube channel. Like, why can't I have a YouTube No, that's channel? awesome. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people want to encourage girls who do sex worker type stuff to, like, stay in their lane. Yeah. And, like, I mean, I get the worst comments, too, even though I've been doing YouTube for two and a half years. But it's, like, if I do a video that's, like, totally unprovocative mm-hmm. and I'm just, like, very wholesome, people mm-hmm. are like, hey, like, this isn't your thing. But it's like, no, you can be everything. You could do whatever yes. you want. You can show, like, all parts of you. So that's really cool. But no, and, and that's it. And seeing you and then also Adam22 on the podcast, and we're in such a podcast era now. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, so I can go and do these other things. And it was really exciting. So huge props for that. Um, but what I really want to know, like, how you got to where you were. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing, because I don't know that side of you. So my upbringing, um, I grew up in the outskirts of LA in Glendale and I graduated high school went to college up in Santa Cruz up north I studied psychology um always super open open-minded but I wasn't like and I and I had my fair share of like sex capades but mm-hmm. I wasn't like someone who was willing to like even take a selfie like that was okay. like really like oh my god this is like too much it's awkward oh, wow. so the fact that I like make YouTube videos and and do scenes and stuff like that for my Snapchat is like such a big jump but yeah. After college, I moved back to LA and I thought I was going to go to graduate school, but then I tried working for this social media company and they were really popular on Snapchat. And so I like kind of grew a little (coughs) bit of a Snapchat presence and an Instagram presence. And then, you know, everyone's just like, what's your premium Snapchat? And I'm like, what is that? And so I made one because Mm -hmm. it was like the numbers added up and it seemed like I was going to be pretty successful doing it. And for me, the big, um, thing about it was that it would give me the freedom to like live my life in the way I wanted to because you're you're dictating your with what your time what you're how you're spending it and stuff like that so that was the big thing for me but I was super shy at first I was like oh maybe I'll take like one photo in the bath of my boobs (laughs) like you know whatever but um I think that I was able to like make the jump because I've always been open-minded yeah even though it was like something that I was really afraid of at first but I I do enjoy it I love that I can do whatever I want with my time and um from there, like people think I did YouTube first and then I moved to the oh, premium, really? but I didn't. I, I had premium first. Yeah, I watched first. your first video and you're like, I do Snapchat and this and that. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, because like YouTube's never been like a source of income for me. Yeah. So I've always had the Snapchat and other things that have supported it. Yes. But um, yeah, I, lo- I love doing all that. I really love doing YouTube, even though I don't do it that, that much as no, much as I, I could. <laughs> I always do like, I'm putting out a YouTube video today on Twitter. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> No, I'm very sweet. No, I really, I, I, it's been, it's very difficult. Like I look up to you and Riley because you have decided to not just stay in your lane. Like you're like, I can be an influencer. I can be on social. There's nothing to be afraid of. And that is a big deal for our industry because at the end of your time here, it's like, what's the next step? What's mm-hmm. your exit strategy from, you know, adult? Yeah, and every platform, like a lot of platforms do have the same functions, but they, a lot of them serve different purposes. You yes. know, it's like Instagram feeds are very polished Mm -hmm. like especially if you're someone who is a public figure or whatever Mm -hmm. you're not putting all the parts that you're putting the best the highlight is going on instagram and it's a feed and it's a photo it's it's like a billboard right Mm -hmm. you don't get so much from a billboard it's just a photograph then there's the stories but they disappear right Mm -hmm. so it's like with your youtube channel you're 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 creating um more depth Mm -hmm. in what your audience can see from you you know and so, um, I mean, I've done everything from cry to fart to whatever <laughs> on my YouTube videos. And I think that people gravitate towards that. They like I, it. I agree. And um, there's there's so much mystery on Instagram if you just see someone's photos. Very you true. Know? Yeah, you don't know so. what's really going on in their life or how they really behave in a social setting yeah. and all of these things. But And that's something that I think drew me to you more than other influencers who are doing similar things is that you're very personable and relatable. It's like, watching your videos is like, okay, I'm hanging out with my best friend. Like, we can be silly and be, mm-hmm. you know, stupid and make funny jokes, and it's not that polished version. And I think that does you, like, so much, so much benefit. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was, 
do you ever feel like you're putting too much of yourself out there? Because, you know, for me personally, it's like I have my Snapchat and my shows and girl girl shows or whatever. And then I have my Instagram and that's the professional, like my gallery, like you said. But then I also have like, I haven't done boy girl mm-hmm. personally, just because I'm like, that's the only thing I have left. Like even my podcast, like my whole life story is out there. Yeah. So I'm like, I have nothing for myself anymore. So I'm kind of like holding on to that one piece, I feel mm-hmm. like for now. But I, I I don't know. Do you, Do you think that you're anything? just afraid of what, what, what might come with that new layer? Like, do you think that people in your family will be more upset if you do boy girl versus girl girl? Or do you um, think that you'll have more? Maybe, and maybe I make it, I seem like, I don't know, in my head maybe there's a difference. But, like, when I see people, like, at the House of Adventure events and they're making content, I'm like, so cool. And it's yeah. really back. And I'm so comfortable with it. But also, um, my husband, who I'd be doing this with, has no has never been in this realm at all. So yeah. I think it'd be more of a leap for him. Okay. Given he'd have the easier job, I would say. Yeah, no, so. he definitely does. He's like, hold the phone, <laughs> yes. figure it out. I mean, I feel like I've always been an oversharer, like okay. always. Like if I'm in line at the grocery store and I sigh and someone says, are you okay? Like I literally just lay it on them. I'm like, I'm going to tell you my life story, you know? So I don't know. For me, I don't feel like I'm giving too much. Too much. The only time that I feel like... I mean, sometimes I'll be out and I'm like trying to have, oh, this actually just happened. I was with my family at um, this thing called Oktoberfest. It's just mm-hmm. like a little mini festival or whatever. Yeah, like and this. some kid came up to me and was like, can I get a photo with you? And like in that moment, I was not Lana the Plug. I was Lana Nersessian. I was with my family yes. and we're, I, that's who I am right yeah. there. So when someone asked me a photo, I was like, like, no. And he was like, why? I was like, I'm with my family. And that's probably the only time where I feel like, Oh, maybe this is like too much, but you know it's gonna happen. And and it was it was totally fine. My dad was sort of joking, but the guy's like, "Do you want a picture with me?" It's like, <laughs> "No, Dad, no, I'm sorry." The other thing is you have that relationship with, which is also super public. So like even that, I feel like like not so much what you're doing on Snapchat, but the podcast with Adam mm-hmm. and the YouTube videos. Like you just released one recently was like your vacation, I believe, to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that video and I was watching it and I'm like. That's so cool. But then do you feel like you're constantly chasing, like, should I be recording this? Would this be good content? Is that in the back of your mind? Yeah. I mean, I definitely like think about that. Like that whole trip, I was there for like five or six days and I only made a video on the one day where I woke up and I was like, I feel like doing it today. The other days I really had like, I just got into Hawaii. I really wanted to enjoy myself. It didn't come to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes I have to push myself more to make content because there's like a lot of really cool things going on and I'm not taking advantage of it. But if I feel like I'm going to take away from my experience by filming, then I definitely just don't okay, want to so film. I feel like that's the same approach. I'm like, if, if it's not fun anymore, I don't want to do it. Like, no. I just want to live in that moment and actually enjoy it and yeah. not make it work. Because it's, it's for fun. I mean, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's what I think about my relationship. I'm like, do I want to do boy-girl? Because I don't want that to become work for me. It doesn't have to. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like you can set boundaries and limits. Like, I live with Adam. I have seven days of opportunity to film content with him. Mm-hmm. But we might film once a month, honestly, maybe twice a month. But yeah, I mean, it's not like once in a while I'll be like giving him a blowjob and he's like, oh my God, you look so hot. And he'll grab his phone and like take a few videos of me really quick. But um, especially because his time, like he's working on his own thing. I don't want to take away from it. But um, I don't think it's taken away from from us. I mean, I think it's like you plan, like this is going to be your like scene time. And this is going to be like your, because it does kind of take away from the sex that you're having because you're. But your husband will be trying to film you and make it film really good, but then he can't fuck you the way he wants yes. to fuck you. And so then, you know, Adam's always like, man, I can't like, I can't fuck you right yeah. because I'm trying to get the angle, but then I'm going to ruin the shot. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's not the exact same, but not the exact same. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to really ask is, do you feel like becoming an influencer has obviously changed your life? I'm sure. But do you consider yourself more of an influencer? Do you consider yourself more of a like, Snapchat or a doll? What do you think? I mean, I feel like this question is just based on who you ask. Okay. Like, um, you know, if my dentist asks me what I do for a living. I don't even want to say YouTuber because people like get so curious and they want to ask me like questions. But I'm, I'm just sure. like, oh, I, I work in social media. But then when I'm here, I'm like, oh, I'm a... I'm a sex worker. I don't know if sex worker is the right term. Premium yeah. Snapchat girl is the right term. Yeah. Porn star is the very, right term. Yeah. It's like a very sensitive thing because especially because the way that you gain popularity is is changing because of the internet. It's like I could say I'm a porn star because my fans think, oh, she makes porn. She's a porn yeah, star. Exactly. But if you're like 
and in the industry and you've been a director for 30 years, yeah. like you don't consider me a porn star. Exactly. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's like, it's really dependent on who you're asking. I have zero problem with the word sex worker. Mm-hmm. I have zero problem with the word porn star, influencer, whatever. I literally will be like, like, I'll take it. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it doesn't bother me. There's I feel no like idea. I fall under some category of those things. But even like, like the, like there's the porn of award celebrity of the yeah. year, you know, I'm yeah. like that category. Thank you for giving me the award last year, <laughs> but it makes no sense to me because I'm like, I have a Pornhub profile page. Yes. But then I'm like in the celebrity category. Why am I not in the cam category? Because I also cam, you know? So it's do like, you actually do live stream webcam? I do live stream webcam oh, too. Okay. So it's like, um, I feel like I've, I'm hard to categorize. Yeah. And then when I do interviews and people ask me like, what do you consider yourself to be? And I don't respond with, I consider blank. Yes. Then I just keep having no category. Yeah. But I'm okay with it. Like mm-hmm. I'd rather not be boxed into one thing. Like, Well, yeah, because you you're going to do so many things anyway. So yeah. it makes perfect sense. Okay. I understand that. And that's it. I have come from a webcam background as well. So I'm like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I'm a cam model and I do this and I do this. And like, okay, so what is that? I'm like, I, don't, I work an adult. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to say to that. Wow. Okay. Well, that's like, I'm so glad and thankful that you had time to sit down with me because oh, I know you're so busy and you're so going to get busy. an award tomorrow. So I'm basically with a celebrity. Oh, 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 obviously. Let's see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us on Generation Slut and we will see you next time. Join us next week when Jada Kai stops by the podcast and we talk about how her professional career as a figure skater influences her life today as a porn star. As always, you've been listening to the Generation Slut Podcast. I'm Lawrence Michaels, reminding you to slut up or shut up.